one of my favorite days of the year because one, jelly beans. Mm. And most importantly, God pulled off the biggest miracle in history and he showed the world how to make peace. Peace is proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. And on Easter, we celebrate how God made peace mm. with us. They should call it Peaster. <laughs> or maybe not. Anyway, you're probably thinking, why would God need to make peace with me? I mean, we're not in an argument. Well, that's a long story, a really long story. To answer that, you have to go all the way back to the beginning. It's like this. People, you get it? People, people, beep, 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 beep. People were really close to God. And then something happened something bad, and it separated God from the people. God's friendship with us was broken, and something had to be done. But don't worry, God had a plan, and you'll find out all about God's plan in today's story, the greatest story ever told, the story of Easter! Woo! Yeah, 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 Easter! Yeah, Easter! Jelly beans, God's plan. Okay, one more jelly bean. I gotta save these for later. One more. 
Mm, that one was popcorn flavored. Hello everyone, my name is Peter. And I'm Annie. And this is the This, this and That, that show. show. We are super excited to do the Easter edition of the This and That Show. And our focus is going to be about peace. That's right. And peace is proving that you care more about each other than winning an argument. That's right. And God made peace with us. And that's exactly what this whole Easter weekend is all about. God making peace with us. Annie, I've got a bit of a problem. A problem? Yes. Okay. I went to the store the other day mm -hmm. and I ended up buying a ridiculous amount of pots. Like flower pots? Yes, flower pots. Like a whole ton of them. I mean, they're just, they're all over my house and I don't know what to do with these things. Do you even like to garden? No, I don't, but they look kind of cool. <laughs> Oh, wait, I have an idea. Oh, uh, okay. Annie, is there a way that we could tell the Easter story by incorporating these pots? I think so. Well, you like to draw, right? I do like to draw, and you like to tell stories. I do. Yes, okay. So this is what's gonna happen. Uh, I'm gonna press this button. Okay. You're gonna tell the story. Okay. And I'm going to illustrate the words that are going to come out of your mouth. Oh, awesome. Awesome, let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Here we go, you ready? Yes. Let's go. Easter weekend is set aside to remember the most amazing thing that has ever happened on planet Earth. Easter changes everything for everyone. It's about brokenness and restoration. And it's more about love than we can ever comprehend. So I thought today would be a perfect time to hear the story all over again. Like really see and hear what it may have sounded like if you were right there. Let's start our story today from the beginning. Not what you were expecting? <laughs> I know what you're thinking. That was three months ago. But the truth is, our story today can't happen without Christmas and the birth of Jesus. See, from the very beginning, when Adam and Eve turned away from God, our world has been broken. But even then, God had a plan to restore us. On that first Christmas, God, the God who made the entire universe, chose to send His Son as a tiny baby to live here with us. How mind-blowing is that? God became human. He experienced everything we do. But Jesus didn't stay a baby. He grew up and he did amazing things. Jesus did amazing things like healing people who hadn't been able to walk or see since they were born. I can see. I can see! One time, on a lake, Jesus ended a wild storm by the sound of his voice. Stop! Amazing, right? Many people loved Jesus and the great crowds followed to hear him teach. He told the people to love God and love others. His closest followers, the disciples, believed Jesus was the one God had promised to restore us, his people. They thought Jesus was about to become a wonderful king over everything. And I don't think the disciples were surprised when Jesus entered into Jerusalem to celebrate Passover and a giant crowd showed up to cheer for him. People, they waved palm branches and they threw their cloaks down in front of him. The disciples may have thought it wouldn't be long before Jesus took over, but the religious leaders saw Jesus as a threat to the way things has always been done. They made a plan to crush the work that Jesus was doing. The religious leaders paid one of Jesus' disciples to betray him. For 30 pieces of silver, Judas agreed to help them arrest Jesus later that night. It looked like God's plan was breaking down. That evening, Jesus shared a meal with his disciples. Jesus, he took a basin of water and he washed his friend's feet. 
even the feet of Judas. Jesus told them that he would leave them soon, but he would return. His friends struggled to understand. Wasn't Jesus supposed to be the promised king? After dinner in the Garden of Gethsemane, things really seemed to break down. Judas betrayed Jesus to the religious leaders. Jesus was arrested and he was taken to stand trial before the high priest. False witnesses told lies about him. And even Jesus' closest friend Peter denied knowing him. The religious leaders, they couldn't sentence Jesus to die. So they sent him to the Roman governor, Pilate, who finally gave in to the crowd and had Jesus beaten and condemned to death. Jesus was forced to drag his own cross, made of two heavy beams of wood. Bleeding and sore, he hauled it up to the top of the hill where the Son of God was nailed to that cross. And Jesus hung on that cross and he died. The sky went dark and it seemed like God's plan had been destroyed. Jesus' body was taken down, wrapped in cloth, and lined inside of a tomb. A huge rock was placed in front of the opening. It looked like Jesus' mission had failed. His friends were devastated, and for three days they hid out with no idea what to do. Everything seemed so that seemed so right had gone so wrong. And it was terrible. It was quiet. And it was scary. But if the story ended there, we wouldn't be here today. But in the darkness and the brokenness, God was still at work. On the third day, an angel threw open the stone that blocked the entrance to that tomb. Jesus returned to life. Suddenly, all those broken pieces started to come together. All that mess started to make sense. God was using all of it, all the great times and all the not so great times to tell his story. And it was beautiful. Jesus, he appeared to his friends and to many people who had seen him die. They knew the truth. Jesus is alive. He lived a perfect life. He willingly chose to die, taking the punishment for all the wrong things we've done. He took all the broken pieces of our lives and made a way for us to live forever with God. It's that simple, that beautiful, and that amazing. Choosing to follow Jesus doesn't mean that everything will be perfect in your life, but it does mean that God will make everything right in the end. So it's like this. All of history, every moment of God's story led up to the life, death, and resurrection of God's Son, Jesus. Sin separated people from God. That was a problem that we couldn't fix. So God sent His Son, Jesus. And after Jesus' death, he beat sin. And after that, he beat death itself. So I guess you could say that Jesus was kind of like a bridge between people and God. That made it possible for us to reconnect with God. The Apostle Paul once wrote, God was pleased to bring all things back to himself. God made peace through Christ's blood by his death on the cross. Because of Jesus, we can be close to God again. We're at peace. Jesus is alive and he's made a bridge that will last forever. So here's the one thing to remember today. God made peace with us. Remember that this Easter. Remember that every day. Really think about what Jesus did for you and tell God how grateful you are. And don't just keep it to yourself either. Share the peace of God with others by telling them about Jesus or by loving them like Jesus loves us. I'll see you next time.